from the Pathway Studios in Johnston proper. You are live from the path. Two live from the path. We're coming from the uh, Pathway Studios here at Johnston Proper. What is the opposite of Johnston Proper? There's 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 some improper. Im, there's some improper parts of Johnston. Is it improper? Is it like commons? What would be like the correct term for? Is it commons the correct term for the opposite? Uh no no no. Uh oh yeah 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 I think so. Okay. Yeah, that would be the right word. Sorry, think. I've just I've heard you say Johnston Proper for like ten years now. And yeah. I, I wasn't certain if that was the deal. No, yeah, that's the deal. Anyway. Here's what I got going on the show today. Uh, so I, I, I found an interesting article upon, uh, it's called Cannibalism Researchers Explain the Perplexing Benefit of Eating Your Kids. Uh, oh. Like and the I, placenta or like no, eating your kids? No, no, eating no your children. It's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and, I, and I saw the headline because I, I, uh, I get my news on uh, Google News. Okay, so like I have Google kind of articulate uh, and send me stuff from a bunch of different. Okay. So I, I go to check this thing out and... Uh, I mean, my lens. I thought it was a joke. Right. I, I thought it was some kind of fun, fun, fun article. And I, I thought, so. this probably isn't funny, but I'm going to read it. Uh, but it's not intended for funniness. And uh, it, yeah, well, anyway, we'll, we'll read it. We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to read it. I'm going to share this with you all. Uh, I and, suppose I understand the concept of freedom of press, but I feel like that's just irresponsible. Uh, no, what, no, it was their study. There's, there's, cannibal, there's people who research cannibalism, which is a, it's a, I mean, it's an interesting gig to get into, right? Of all the things, like, hey, man, I'm going to grow up and be a scientist. I'm right. going to change the world. I want to see why people eat people. Right. Huh. Yeah, like, I want to be passionate about certain things. I'm going to go into molecular biology or organic chemistry. Or something. Yeah. A person said, really interested in cannibalism. I want to study not just the concept of it, like, culturally, yeah. but the scientific reasons behind it. Are these people healthier? And or benefits. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming these are in places that probably don't have refrigeration. So they, do they just nibble on them, like, take a finger here and there? Oh, gross. Or, or do they just... Uh, you know, prepare the whole. Piece. I don't want to give the article away yet. Okay, okay. so we're, right, we're going. You got me thinking. No, I we're going to get to it. We're going to see how things go. Uh, plus, we have uh, we have advice on dear life from the path. Mike's not here tonight, so uh, I'll take care of that. I'll, I'll pull it up and do my very best not to comment before the story is is done. Are you going to comment grammatically throughout the story I, about I whether can't or not he- they're I can't help what the people semicolon do. and or colon is necessary. I can't help what people full do. colon. So the internet could lose the semicolon <laughs> and the world would be better for it. That's what I'm saying. All right. Fair enough. Uh, actually, it's weird. So I, 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 have a, I have a side gig. Well, I have a number of side gigs. But like, uh, so I, I've been doing um, work on Fiverr.com um, editing. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's, it's, it's outrageously interesting the types uh, or the variations in grammar that people have. Like, and, and we're talking professional people, like mm-hmm. people who have skills, people who are paid – go speak in front of large audiences but who could not write their way out of a crayon box yeah uh and and like uh, just just like reading some of these things and like so there's been a few times that we, where if you go to fiverr.com and you have someone you can pay them five bucks to do a bunch of different things. right um I, I i'm actually at 20 bucks i thought like i Whoa. fired up for the big it's big i might if i want to do the work i want you're gonna pay me the big 20 well buddy and so but but anyway like people will sign up for the deal and like they give a description of themselves, and part of my requirements are tell me what you're trying to accomplish with this kind of piece of writing. And, like, uh, probably three times it's happened to me where the, the way that they, they explain themselves, like, it's intimidating. Because I'm like, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to help these people, right? And, and you want to be able to give somebody some value for their $20, but which, which is interesting when it comes to, like, uh, editing work because I, I don't want your work to be so bad uh, that I have to spend a bunch of time to do it. Right. Uh, but like, if it's really great, then I feel like they didn't get their twenty bucks. But it's it's worth it, frankly, just to know it looks good, right. It's, yeah. it's worth it. anyway. Yeah. Long story short, uh, it's amazing to me uh, some of these folks who who are like credentialed and I mean are are changing the world with some of the stuff that they're doing have, are just awful. They're just awful, right? They they like their like their punctuation bad, grammar's bad, sentence formation's not very good. It's like really? chopped up stuff everywhere. Uh, basic punctuation is not in the right place. Sentence flow, uh, like paragraph flow, also not good. I just, it's it's flabbergasting to me. Um, but but I guess when you come to realize that like there's the things that we have tied together that are they're just not necessarily tied together. Like people um, people can have a great skill and they like a great public orator, but if you ask them to write 
uh, write something down, a persuasive paragraph. They're just not very. They're not as good at it. They right. don't. That's not their medium. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's 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 um, there's authors who can write you a, a fantastic story, but if they tried to tell the same story in front of fifteen people, they would do a terrible job. Like they're not great storytellers, but they're great writers. Anyway, it's it's an interesting uh, interesting reality. To so do you just cringe when you read the Dear Live from the Past? Then uh, when the, when sometimes when they're just so poorly done, <laughs> I just yeah. Oh. Makes you sad. And here's the deal. I'm not even I'm not even fantastic at it. Like in the world of editors, like there's guys that are just I mean, they are um, they're nitpicky. And I'm not much of a nitpicker. Like I don't I I, I, I don't go around looking for trouble. Right. Uh, I only I'm a soft editor. I only edit stuff if I have to. Uh, otherwise, I tend to just leave things be because like people's voices are like I'd rather your voice come out of mm-hmm. it. Uh, right. If I start changing much stuff, then it's my voice and it's I'm not right. doing an editor job. Right. Um, but like some of it is just, just I mean outrageously bad and, and some of the dear lives from the past i'm like uh i don't this was published <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was published fair enough yeah someone should just take a take a swing at it, it could be fine all right so anyway well, we'll get to that thanks for hanging out with us on live from the past so far we've wasted roughly five minutes of your life and you should be grateful for it um so here so dig it says cannibalism researchers explain the perplexing benefit of eating your kids so, uh, society doesn't exactly see consuming one's own children as an act of care no, when scientists no. first documented filial cannibalism, uh, the killing and eating of one's own offspring, they were quick to label it a rare quirk of evolution. It was a tragic event that seemed maladaptive at best. I would agree. My first inclination of what I know of the uh, theory of evolution would say uh, ev- things should survive right. um, without being preempted by the parents. Mm-hmm. However, a study released Tuesday adds to a growing body of evidence. A growing body. That shows the opposite. Eating kids isn't just natural. It's sometimes the considerate thing to do. Dan, I want you to, I want you to watch the, de- the descriptions in this article uh, for familiarity to um, uh, pro-abortion arguments. Because uh, they're, they're going to match them almost point for point. Similar things. Of course, it's less considerate when you're the one being eaten. Great. New paragraph. But scientists explain in Frontiers in Ecology and Evolution how they used a mathematical model to prove that in some cases, sacrificing a few children so many others can live underlies the argument that filial cannibalism is a form of parental care. Hope Klug, Ph.D., an associate professor at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, tells Inverse, uh, which is where the article is from, that the team started this investigation by wondering why such a wide range of animals eat or abandon their young. From an evolution, this is a quote. From an evolutionary perspective, this is really perplexing because if you're always eating your babies, it's hard to imagine how a trait like filial cannibalism or abandonment could persist in a population. Luke says, "We began to wonder if eating or getting rid of some young could help out remaining offspring, and that's essentially what we found." So let's just stop right there. Premise premise of the article is that there is a survival benefit uh, for for cannibalism uh, from an animal perspective. That makes sense, Buva? Yes. Yeah, and and so like. I think at its core, I, I get where the argument's going. Right. If you think of if you think of provision, uh, like hey, there's X amount of food to go around. Yeah, and resources are finite. Yeah, yeah, and so you can either increase resources mm-hmm. or reduce demand. Right. Those are the two things you can do. Right. And so, as opposed to hunting and gathering more, kill the number of people that need it. Are you a hundred percent certain that this is not a gag? Uh, no, not a gag. That is based off of the fact that, like, an Avengers movie is coming out soon. It has to do with the wake of Thanos destroying half the universe because resources are finite and to save the rest of us. I did not see the word Thanos in the article, but I could, I could have missed it. Just checking. Okay. Is, yeah. it, is it possible this is about gerbils? Because gerbils will eat their young. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, but that's, that's the thing that they're saying. Like, yeah. other animals, other animals uh, do this. Right, so it must be good. And there's a, there's a chance, well, there's, there's studies showing that it's actually possibly beneficial to the remainder to the human population it's yeah. Hel- yeah it's healthier to the gerbils if you get rid of two or three because there's only so much food in yes. the tank yeah well, from from a natural selection standpoint it makes plenty of sense it, 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 resources are finite parents can only take care of so many uh they may only have food for so many and therefore if they have too many they need to get rid of them and so instead of just senselessly murdering them eat them for sustenance you know what's well here let's let's, let's keep moving in there bears dogs and mice have, I mean, I don't know that you wouldn't uh, call that senselessly murdering. Uh, no, what I mean from the perspective is, like, uh, not use, utilizing them as a resource. Yeah, okay. That's what I mean by I that. Not, okay. not necessarily from the perspective of it's not a senseless kill, but from the perspective of it's going to benefit. Like, at least you're not going to waste it. Like killing a bison. Exactly, yeah. You use every part of the animal <laughs> rather than just killing it for sport. Yeah, yeah. Except for in this instance, another human. 
Right. Okay, I'm with you. Bears, dogs, and mice have all been documented eating their young, and the same holds true for some birds and spiders. Allele cannibalism is especially witnessed in species that, that participate in communal egg laying, creatures like fish, insects, reptiles, and amphibians. In this study, Klug and her colleagues specifically focused on these egg laying species. Communal egg laying, when multiple members of a species share a nesting region, comes with its pros and cons. On the positive side, it makes it easier for animals to protect, clean, incubate, and feed eggs. The problem is that it also increases the chance of disease transmission and competition for food and oxygen. Scientists have previously hypothesized that eating offspring is an adaptation that improves the overall survival of offspring because it reduces density. What we're talking about, fewer kids means a greater chance of more kids making it out alive. Right. Uh, here the researchers tested this hypothesis with a mathematical model. The model introduced one animal with the mutation for filial ca- we're, Here, we're going to call this uh, parent cannibalism. No reason to keep saying filial into a population of generic egg-laying animals. Kluge explains that parent cannibalism is thought to be a trait that is in part controlled by one or more genes. So it's gene-driven. Okay. Okay. Then they watch what happened. Previous models based on a similar design found that the gene for cannibalism spread throughout a population if it resulted in more calories for a parent. That's good news for a parent, but not exactly an argument for parental care. Now, here's, here's what's difficult. Uh, eating five children would produce more calories for the parent. Right. right? So it can't just be... Hey, uh, this is this is more calories for me. I it's not indis- it's not indiscriminate. It's not right. it's not um, dogs, for example, more likely to eat their uh, offspring than other food available. Mm-hmm. That's not what it is. And so, like the 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 basic uh, result to say, hey, it results in more calories for a parent for the parent uh, seems like a weird way to talk about the end results. Yeah, agreed. It's it, it it's it doesn't seem like it's survival based. Like, yeah, that would be the that would be the argument for a caloric diet, like. It's heavy, heavy dense of calories, therefore I can survive longer. I have more energy uh, versus eating something else. Yeah. Okay, now here's the kicker. What's different about this study, uh, I said that's good news for a parent, but not exactly an argument for parental care. What's different about this study is that they found parent cannibalism serve, served the surviving offspring. More eggs resulted in more cannibalism, which in turn resulted in increased fitness. The children born from the cannibalistic parents were able to outcompete and replace the generic population. So the broad argument is to say is that if uh, it, if if you have, if the broad state the stasis of the community is a level of uh, performance, mm-hmm. well, let's call it A. Yep. Um, if you're the if you're a cannibalistic parent, you are more likely then to produce offspring that are A plus that perform above the stasis of the community. Did they find any reason for that for that data? Uh, let's say. Uh, Klug says this result was a surprise. They didn't anticipate the parent, parent cannibalism would improve the survival of the remaining offspring. Right. Now, I, I don't know that that should be a surprise. If the otherwise, if the if the uh, entire group of uh, kids or offspring were were going to be malnourished, uh-huh. mm-hmm. uh, then I suppose by eliminating the right, exactly finite resources. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but it can't be just because because it's the parent eating. Yeah, the that's offspring. what I'm saying. It's is, not yeah. being shared with the kids. Yeah, un- unless their argument is that the the cannibalism is strengthening the parent and therefore is creating stronger offspring genetically there's really no draw for that there's there's no there's no link there right that i'm seeing and so th- that would be the only way that i could see that argument playing itself out in any way yeah because isn't the underlying comparison assumes um like like if, if if all things were equal it's weird to say that parental cannibalism produces offspring that are otherwise uh, outperforming, mm-hmm. um, and here, here, Dan, here, here's here's what I was getting. Here's one of the one of the um, I think uh, coincidence or things that coincide with the way that people talk about uh, abortion is you know who they're not counting when it comes to the performance of the of the pack here, the one that's dead, right? Like that's a fail. So what they say is like, oh, you know, like we got nine kids performing at X fitness, right? But you killed one of them. Yeah, exactly. That's the expunged data. That's that's uh, performing at no fitness. That's your outlier. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, uh, they didn't re- anticipate that parental cannibalism would improve the survival of the remaining offspring. She says we can think of this as thinning of the nest. If you have so many offspring that not all of them will be able to survive, then removing some young is a beneficial act for the offspring that aren't eaten. Here's the other question, though. is like that assumes then, by comparing it to the general population, that the general population is, as a whole, malnourished. Right. Um, which seems, I'm not sure that's established here. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it is at all. Yeah. Um, uh, again, s- similar uh, pro-abortion argument is, uh, hey, what are we going to do with these kids? We, we don't have enough resources to take care of them. Right? S- similar. 
Right. For, for other species that eat their young, like mammals, Klug says it's likely they eat their babies because something is wrong with them or because they are likely to be eaten by predators. Most likely, parental cannibalism occurs across species for a range of reasons, not just because it's a service to other offspring to eat a few when eggs are clumped together, although that is what was determined here. From a biological perspective, it's really interesting that there might be a range of factors that lead to the evolutionary origin and maintenance of this behavior, Klug explains. Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are famously said to their adopted child, Max, we'll eat you up. We love you so. <laughs> While love may not be exactly the motive in real life wild things, they are willing to eat their young as well. Well, so I... I... The only thing that I would argue is those mammals that, that they're talking about, that they're saying that they're eating because of uh, uh, either they're sick or they're not going to make it on their own or they're anything like that, they're inside the food chain still. Yeah. We, we, have, a, we, have, we have exited the food chain as a species for the most part. Uh, we, we are our own apex predators because of technology, because of intelligence and things like that. Yeah. We have a, a way to save ourselves. We provide our own shelter and things like that. Um, Nothing is a predator to us as long as we stay outside of their realm and or have a weapon. And so there's really no need for that within our species any longer, if that's the argument. The argument for, you know, thinning the herd because of natural selection because, oh, they would have died anyway. We have medicine. We, we are outside the food chain. We do not need to exist in that realm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And it, so I think that, like, the core the – core, interesting part obviously is like where you start making distinctions when we look at the animal world uh the world around us i I suppose one of the key questions is is there is there a uniqueness in humanity absolutely and and it's like if we don't believe there's a uniqueness in humanity then you look at some of this behavior and we're like "Eh." right maybe okay like you could then then you're not throwing away sentience right you're not throwing away um something that has um, inherent um moral value um regardless of its faculties because it's human being um uh, it, it's very utilitarian. It's uh, you know wh- whatever serves whatever serves the entire the most people. Um, then the sacrifices are okay. It's okay to sacrifice the, the uh, individual for the sake of the group. Right. Um, but that's a very that's obviously a dangerous. It's a dangerous president. Uh, for, although it is the nature of almost all war, mm-hmm. uh, is that very thing. But um, anyway, I, it was it was it was interesting. So I was reading this and like at its whole, they, they put a picture of some kind of woman. Uh, on the front of the article, and so I kind of expected like um, connecting it to some sort of human behavior in, in some level or another. But like, it, it's weird because this the type of thought process here opens the door to a lot of the things that I think modern Christianity worries about when it comes to like the way that we think, about it, right? And the, the, uh, specifically, if we look about how um, life is valued, and and even the. Um, the sci- uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. The scientification of the um, of the essence of of humanity, right? And so, to the extent that I can separate and say humanity is not distinct, um, then then we all become just machines that are programmed to do X, Y, and Z, right? right? Gen- well, I have a genes. The genes made me do it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why I rape, kill, bite, whatever it is I do. Yeah, when morality is taken out. Of- Th- that's right. Like, there's no sense of, of, of malleability. It is, it is we are who we are. We're, we're dictated by our genes. Which, we, like, you fail this. Um, even, the, even the concept of, like, um, germ theory. The, the germ theory, like, the, the things are passed through the presence of germs. But the, but the wrong reaction to that is to say that nothing can be done. So, like, the, the wrong look into the germ theory says, hey, um, I, have, I was exposed to the flu. Uh, I will definitely get the flu and be throwing up. Right. Like, that's not really true. Like, your body's actually capable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's things you can do in reaction to the germs. So the right. germs don't automatically win. Just like genes don't, it, it doesn't automatically win. There are, there are ways um, to, to modify behavior. Yeah. Um, even things that we feel like are, are programmed into. Right, exactly. You know, genetically speaking, we may have our own primal urge. Things like that, that that come with being a species of animal, technically still. But we have conscience and we have, uh, we have brains and souls above that. Right, that's right, and and is it that's that's the core, um, isn't that the core reaction or the core um, uh, societal belief is to say uh, I was I was I was I was made for this. My my body has this urge, mm-hmm. I, so I have a desire to do it. I mean, you can't tell me that there's 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 got to be a a ninety nine percent a tag on on married individuals who have some sort of an urge or another towards somebody else at some mm-hmm. point in time. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah. Right, something like that. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is your um, that you are destined uh, to, to pursue that. As, as a matter of fact, uh, we have pretty strong evidence that you're not destined to pursue that. Right. Right. Like so, as much as we, I think we look at some of these things and be like, oh well, I had this urge, and so I feel like I had to fulfill it. 
um, there seem to be people that are able to to not have to chase right, exactly. it. Exactly, and it, it doesn't mean it's not difficult. But uh, I think the it's not built and pre-programmed to say this is this is how we must be. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I tell you, what, if we could get to the point where that was the case, I, you lose all concept or any faith that there is a, that there is a living, God. like because then you're machines. Like you're sim- you're simply a series of of, of programmed machines uh, of which evil is implicit. Right, exactly. We 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 could quantify ourselves as bags of water and electricity, but we're so much more than that. Yeah, like that's ourselves. We are we are water and we are electricity. Like that's what we are based off of. But that that isn't our entire identity. Right. Our identity is is much further than that. Yeah, and it is much more complicated. My cells may still have their own prime directive it, that I'm made up of, of trillions of. Yeah, but I, as a, as as an organism, have much more value, more worth, more intelligence than that, and than those prime directors. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think maybe one of my one of my takeaways after reading this was is is one I, I be careful. Like this is it, it's legit science, but like um, what we see, what what is demonstrated in the world and studied um, by humanity and found to be um, or is observable. Um, is d- it does not always have the same um, relevant applications, right? So, like, uh, as, as you go through and, and you're, uh, as you engage in, in what people say, oh, say there was a new study that X, Y, and Z. Uh, total cool thing to engage in is, great, what did they observe? Right. What, what, what were the facts? What did we find out? Great. How that gets applied um, needs a much broader focus. Right, exactly. Like, you got be, to be super careful that, like, because you strip this of this, of, of our sense of morality, um, value, and worth of humanity, um, you you've straight up started to justify, uh, you know, I just don't think there's enough going to be re- resources around. And frankly, I want my other kids to perform well. Right, exactly. And so let's, let's kill Junior. Yeah, you're justifying murder. Without, without conscience, you're justifying murder. Yeah, well, well uh, under the guise that you are, well, it's best for everyone. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Tricky. It's, I, it was, it, I guess that was the second thing that struck me, is that, like, so much of this is, um, of, of these basic questions or the way to look at the world comes up in not only how we talk about... Um, uh, choices around abortion, but but even even how we understand our own behavior in light of um, kind of an intrinsic moral, or like what we are going to do or not do as mm-hmm. human beings, as if we do not have any um, ability to sort of some level of control over ourselves. Um, anyway, cannibalism. You're welcome. You uh, you want to read more on that? Go ahead. It's inverse dot com. Uh, just do a search for um, cannibalism. There's not I multiple do not articles. want to read any more about that. Yeah, no, that's enough, right? It's just not. I'm not even hungry now. I'm just. I'm just <laughs> wondering. What, I'm still wondering what the motive was behind the research. Like that's what I'm confused about. I, I I'm not asking to re-delve into it. I'm just saying like that's just an interesting thing that someone yeah. decided that we're going to run a mathematical simulation based off of genetics of whether or not uh, filial cannibalism will be. A- yeah. So check this out. So here's the here's the abstract. Maybe this will, this will help. Uh, parental care is a key life history trait that increases offspring fitness. When one thinks of parental care, nurturing behaviors such as guarding, provisioning, and grooming typically come to mind. However, such conventional forms of care often co-occur with offspring abandonment or filial cannibalism. Mm -hmm. Offspring abandonment and filial cannibalism are typically viewed as evolutionary conundrums that are contradictory to parental care. Here we hypothesize that when offspring survival is density dependent, offspring abandonment and filial cannibalism can themselves function as forms of parental care for the remaining offspring. Gotcha, okay. We use a mathematical model to test this hypothesis. Our results suggest that the offspring abandonment and parental cannibalism can function as forms of parental care Got for it. everyone except for the dead thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which we are not quantifying it. Yeah, I, I, again, like, I, <laughs> that's, that, that's it does the not thing have is, value in this thing. I, I can easily do that. Like, you can, you can uh, as a matter of fact, that, that's when um, a, a lot of, of popular data to try to convince people to think one way or another comes from that, right? If you can just discard the thing that you don't yeah. like. Oh, absolutely. It's outliers. Yeah. Like, it's, it's totally cool. Look, look <laughs> yeah. at all these people we're helping. By the way, we're, we're crushing this guy. Right, <laughs> exactly. Anytime that I want to show you data, oh, don't worry about the thing that completely goes against what I'm trying to prove you right now. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to wipe that one. That's an outlier. Yeah. Yeah, hey, we now now here's the thing. There's a difference. It's interesting. Is now think of this comparison coming out of Easter. This is the very concept of which Jesus functions under, except for his is out of intentional sacrifice. Right. There's a difference between saying let's uh, as, wait. Who made the argument? Who who made the biblical argument that it, that it was um it was the high priest? Right. It's mm-hmm. better that one guy should die than everybody else. He's right. he's he's making the cannibalism argument. It's better that we should just like let Rome kill Jesus. Um, huh? Unless we bring all the trouble upon ourselves, yeah, very utilitarian, right? Uh, 
funny enough, Jesus looks at that similar bargain and he goes, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Kill me, save a lot of people. Sounds okay. like a good plan. Yeah, exactly. Let's do Except this. for he's in on it. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. We didn't just choose it for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so it's, it's interesting because if you, if, you strip the, if you strip the context away and just said, look, uh, it's okay that, so, that one person dies for the benefit of hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands. You're like, well, yeah, that seems like a worthy sacrifice. Would you do it? Sure. They're like, yeah, I, I feel like I would do that. Uh, but then if I say, oh, by the way, we're not giving you the choice. It's, uh, it's, it's Hunger Games. Like, it's stew. Right. Like, you know what? If someone has to die, we choose stew. <laughs> and then you're like, well, that's not fair to stew because stew didn't volunteer. Like, there's, there's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. The right. same act, it's, it's, a result, it's a motivation result. And you know who didn't have a choice? The kid that got eaten right. by his dog friend. Right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, there's a lot baked into that cannibalism article that I wasn't expecting yeah. uh, from a societal perspective. Uh, good luck. Uh, okay, good. There was one other article. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. Um, <laughs> have anything to do with filial no, cannibalism? No. <laughs> no, this was it. This, that, was, that was it. What about filial piety? Talking about Buddhism? Mm, Sounds like fun. No articles. Nope. Dang. Nope. 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 No Buddhist articles? Nope. Gone. Yeah, yeah they don't. No. Nope. Gone completely. Hey, uh, actually, interesting story over the weekend. All right, let's hear it. So we, um, so I uh, um, do a house church. And so of, of, like, Easter weekend's big, right? Like, people show up to church. And, it, like, and it's a time when, like, um, when they normally don't show up to church, they might show up on Easter, right? So right. you prepare for this kind of thing. Uh, house church on, on an average Sunday, uh, there's literally no chance that someone's just going to show up to a random house <laughs> and go, hey, there's a church going on here. There's something going on <laughs> there. I <laughs> thought we might join, right? And I so the presence of the Lord. That doesn't change on Easter. Hey, right? that'd be kind of cool, though. Uh, it would be cool. So, so that, that doesn't particularly change on Easter, right? Because still, um, people were generally going to whatever they're going to do. And so we happened to have, um, we had church at, uh, we rotate houses. And so we went to, um, at, at a person's house this, this weekend. And um, uh, it's like the first or second time we've been there. And their house is just a little small. Like it's hard to fit, you know, 40, 40 45 people in a, in a living room. Right. Uh, in a small house. And so we said, hey, it's, it's pretty nice outside. We're going to go ahead and do it outside. And so we went outside, uh, set up in there under the carport, and uh, fired up some tunes, and, uh, and we're, we're rolling along. And sure enough, two neighbors walk by, and, and uh, they had heard the music, and they got out of their house, and they came over. And um, uh, somebody just kind of went over and talked to them for a bit, and they went and got some lawn chairs and no, hung out is. at church with us, right? Cool. And so, so here's, here, it's, it's a cool thing because, like, um, it's kind of one of the, one of the guiding principles is, like, I can't um, – um, the Holy Spirit has to solve a lot of our the, – the problems that come with house churches, space, and what do you do with kids and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, I can't – some of the stuff is beyond my pay grade. And so, like, people wandering into your church when you have actually no way for them to, like, advertise or, like, mm-hmm. make it known. And I thought, awesome. That was exciting. So, anyway, I was, it was kind of a fun story in light of um, – uh, I was thinking. I was thinking about Easter and like a lot of people coming out and like th- that whatever was whatever other folks um, um, people get out and, and go to church on Easter. Those guys didn't. <laughs> right. Like yeah. uh, they didn't get out and go. Right. Uh, they didn't it, go find a church. A church found it. It just happened to be in their neighborhood. Um, and I thought. And I thought cool um, because there's a lot of places where 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 people people went to churches um, to find something that maybe they'd lost. And, and this was a weekend for them to reconnect, and that's awesome. And, like, if, it's, if it starts because um, this is the one time of year they go, fine. Fine. Right. What, what yeah, an opportunity, absolutely. right? Um, and so, like, and you get a higher number than, than normal on Easter. And then you got the people who still don't go, and the Lord, Lord found a way there, too. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. It's freaking great. That's that was, cool. that. That that. was exciting. I dig on that, man. That's why we do what we do. That's right. That's right. It's just, um, and, and, it's, and it's cool. It, like, those kind of things are awesome because you're like, I had no hand in this whatsoever. Yeah. There was no plot or plan. Nothing we did can be credited to any of this. The Lord just sent a couple folks over from next door. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Let's do some. Uh, I can't. You did, oh, but did I forget? Did you have something? You didn't have anything. No, I didn't have anything. Okay. Just. I had random stories from, from my, my life that no one wants to hear. Yeah, I understand. I thought I had a. I thought I had a. Style, but I've, I've okay. Here we go. Dear life from the path, a close friend and I usually take a girl's trip once a year, a long weekend at the same place. We drive there because it's close to where we live. She has asked me again this year about going. I don't feel like going, uh, going for many reasons. She spends a lot of time on her phone, texting or playing on apps when we should be socializing. I like to relax and have a couple of drinks when I'm on vacation. Semicolon. He doesn't drink. <laughs> Our taste in restaurants and food is completely different. 
Always? Never, sorry. Plus, she's on a tight budget, and I can, can't afford to spend like I can. <laughs> I usually cover the cost of our stay in a condo. She's also negative and enjoys feeling sorry for herself. Well, I prefer looking on the bright side of things. <laughs> yeah, I can see already. <laughs> Look at all these bright things. Dear life in the path, I don't like my friend. Should uh, I spend time with her? Hold on. I don't mind spending an evening with her, but that's it. She hates her job, complains about financial problems, and taking care of her parents, who often feel like they should have done filial cannibalism. And her marriage isn't the best. But she does have a big heart. I would rather save my vacation days from work and stay home with my husband and animals. I take multiple vacations year-round. How many semicolons are in this thing? She does not. I almost feel obligated to go. I'm afraid I'll hurt her feelings if I tell her I don't want to do it anymore. I can't use work, money, or the place being occupied as an excuse. What should I do? Wait, Moses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have two choices here. You can be honest and hurt her feelings, or you can lie to her and then just be miserable the entire time. Yeah. And then hurt her feelings. And then hurt her feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. maybe you shouldn't have let 11 things that you can't stand about your best friend now build up into this, oh, crap, now I got to go on yeah. a vacation with her. Maybe you can talk to her like a human being. I don't. I don't empathize yeah. with these kind of situations. Just, We've been hearing this kind of stuff for years. Yeah. And it kills me <laughs> how people just don't understand just general human interaction. How about, how about cut the time in half? Right. She just say, hey, bit. instead of going on this long trip, let's just do, go to this place for a day. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a daycation. That's all I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to spend the remainder of my vacation with my husband and family. That's but fair. I still want to spend the time with you. So let's just go for a day. I'll go to a restaurant I don't like because we don't like the same places. I wouldn't think that was weird if someone told me that. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'd just be like, oh, that's totally fair. I can appreciate that. I'm glad you still want to go. Tradition did not hold sway, but that's fine. Yeah. This seems super oversold, though. Exactly. So I I usually take a girl's trip once a year, a long weekend. So, like, when you think long weekend, what do you think? I think three days. Three days, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, Sunday. So this business about— This is not a two-week deal in Lincoln when you're in Omaha. Like, this is not— Yeah, so, so here's what I'm saying. I take multiple vacations year-round. I would rather save my vacation days from work and stay home with my husband so and animals. You're taking one day. One day. Yeah, exactly. One? And you're like, no, I go on multiple vacations a year, but this one day is really chaffing me. Yeah, man, maybe I'll have to get a different flight back from Singapore if I can't take this one yeah. day here. Well, you're ridiculous. Take, take a vacation, be a human being, and... Love on your friend. I'm also confused at this description of a close friend who she's been doing this every year who says... And now she hates I, Yeah, I just don't like her. Yeah. But, and, and they're not even just like the, like the phone thing. I get that that could happen over time. Yeah, sure. But like, I like to relax and have drinks. She doesn't, she doesn't drink. drink. We have completely different tastes in restaurants. She's on a tight budget, and I like to spin wildly. Yeah, so apparently... She's negative, I'm positive. Like, what? You're not a personable person. This person is actually trying to have a friendship with you, and you're just too heinous to go, like, hey, I can't spend any amount of time with you. Like, you're a jerk. That's yeah. what I think about this person. Yeah, you know, I would, here's the I'm deal. being harsh, but I'm sorry. I would tell the truth it's, here it's and out yourself. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think the one day makes sense. Or like, yeah, just whatever. Take, take, take a, a Friday, vacation. Friday yeah. and Saturday. Yeah. You don't even right. have to take it off. Right. Yeah. Drive up on Friday, stay the night in a hotel, and drive home on Saturday. And then maybe sure. talk to your friend about some of this stuff. Right. Spend your time not drinking with your friend who does not drink. And then say, hey, let's talk about your life. Because it doesn't sound like you're happy. Yeah. But I am no oh so happy. Yeah. Do, I mean, do you guys have, do you have any, really, well, first of all, do you, would you guys consider yourselves fickle about restaurants? No. I, I wish I was. Dan is not. Okay. I'm Troy, not. you're not? I like uh, everything. Are you? No. But I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. When she says uh, our taste in restaurants and food is completely different. Yeah. Like, are, are, there, are, there two, are there people that are like that? They're like, so I won't. Here's the one. Okay. So I'll be honest about one thing for me. I don't like going to Applebee's. Okay. I, like, I just, I feel like, and, and, and it's not like I don't like Applebee's. Applebee's has great burgers. They've got great sandwiches. It's kind of impossible to mess up a, a bacon cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. But... My thought process is there are so many other restaurants that you can try so many different things that are either yeah. of better quality or some that you've never tried before. And so go there. Go local. So if someone says to me, hey, do you want to go to an Applebee's? I'm like, no. Let me give you 12 other places I, I can suggest that's a local owner that's food you've never tried before. That's why I would in any way be like, a, eh, I don't think I want to go there. Yeah, so I get that. I, I, it's, the, that's her, it, though. The implication is that, like, we're stymied. Like, I like Chinese and only Chinese. I right, like exactly. Mexican and only Mexican. We can't agree on anything. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, of all the food out there, like, 
you share no tastes? Right. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it, this is America. Everyone can everyone can eat some barbecue. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that is that is our food. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, you're ridiculous. Okay. You're, you're just p- nitpicking things, and I don't think I like you as a person. So, okay, so, the, so the, our advice is to say, hey, look, uh, you need to still go out with her. Mm-hmm. D- you cut it down if you yeah. feel like you have to. Don't, don't take, take the your vacation weekend. days. Yeah. Take a vacation. Uh, but we feel like you should probably, since this is a close friend who you go on a girl's trip with, perhaps you should talk to her about some of these things. Right, and then spend the other two whining. days of your long weekend maybe in some introspection of, I wonder where I'm at. I mean, I'm, I, we're going to get a letter next week from your husband who goes, my wife usually goes on a girl's trip, and now she's stuck here with me. <laughs> my wife she's recently so sent in a letter to Dear Life from <laughs> the Path. Right. She didn't take as long of a vacation, and now I'm sad. Yeah. <laughs> Even the dogs seem to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> she's um, been picky about her restaurants. Yeah. What do I do? Okay, here we go. Uh, the Secular says, frankly, if you can tolerate this woman's company for one evening only, your friendship may have gone from hot to temperate. Traditions don't necessarily last forever, and it may be time to make a change. Tell her that this year you would love to spend an evening with her, but you prefer to stay quietly at home with your husband rather than take the long weekend trip. As she's not going to understand that you go on multiple more vacations right, exactly. this year. I don't want to go on a long trip. Oh, me and Glenn are going to Fiji next month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and she, the, the woman likes to drink and have a good time, not the other one. Ah, this is terrible. Be as diplomatic as possible. That's how I like my old friends to treat me. Yeah, exactly. As a diplomat. <laughs> and tell her you know she's carrying a lot on her shoulders, but the only person who can fix the things that stress her out or make her unhappy is her, by talking with someone who is better qualified than you are to listen and oh advise her. God. And the only reason you're not qualified is because you suck as a friend. Right. I get, uh, here's the deal. There, there's, uh, I, I, can, I can attest through seeing it in, in multiple people's lives, there's certainly a value um, in, in, in getting professional help of course. Uh, to talk through some things. Uh, I, but I'm telling you, uh, a, a good friend who's willing to listen to you will go a long way. Yeah. They're, you're bowing out because you just want out, not because you're not qualified. That's, right. That's horse duty. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cop out. Okay. Agreed. All right. Oh, for him. Let's hear it. Dear Live from the Path, this is hard to write. My mother-in-law constantly asks me how much I weigh, expecting me to give her an honest answer. I have been saying that my medical information is private. I mean, that's one way to handle it. Yeah. Please hand her a HIPAA form. <laughs> but she continues to ask, even going so far as to ask other people if they know my weight. She wheedles me for confidential health data every time. Why are you saying it that way? <laughs> right. I, is she trying to steal my medical ID? <laughs> I, telling her it's private won't keep her from asking again. It really makes me not want to visit her anymore. Where is your husband? This, hold on. This is what you think she's up to? You think, like, most people would be like, oh, a meddling mother-in-law. She's like, no, she's after my medical identity. Right, exactly. <laughs> what is she going to steal with your medical identity? <laughs> do you, by chance, have, like, a password that has to do with your weight that she's trying to get into? I don't understand this. I'm, okay, I don't know. There's, okay. like, 11. Okay. Multiple items, right? Yeah. So, so the, one was, where's the where's husband? Where's the husband? Yeah, yeah, where's the husband in this, <laughs> hey, Ma, stop asking my wife how much she weighs. It's getting weird. Yeah. Like, there's nothing. <laughs> You, you le- if you married this woman, you left your parents and became one with her. It is your job, if this is that weird and uncomfortable to her, to go to your mother and go, Ma, come on. <laughs> stop it. Like, just stop. Yeah, yeah. This is weird. Yeah. Okay, that's first. Absolutely. Second I, I, off, I, oh, you're being paranoid with the thought process of you think your mother-in-law is trying to steal your medical identity. Mm-hmm. If you're willing to, to entertain that level of insanity... Just get a HIPAA form from your doctor and make sure that you give it to her that says, hey, I will not disclose this information to you. Only me and my doctor can go through this. You're crazy. Yeah, Dan? Obviously, the mother-in-law is a meddler, and she just wants to know, but you've still got to have enough gumption to just say, I'm not going to tell you. Stop asking me. Right, yeah. That's it's private private out of your business. I don't tell anybody. Yeah, I mean, print out some business cards that said, no, not this time. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Be, sp- be funny about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Tell you weigh 1,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Lie. Yeah, I mean, what, 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 yeah, exactly. There's yes. no consequence to this woman. Tell her you weigh a metric ton. Tell her you wear it all in your feet. I don't know. I don't. I, I have an adamantium skeleton. Don't worry about it. It's like Wolverine. I don't understand. I am confused why she's talking about it like this. Why does she say she wheedles me? What is the word wheedles? Me for confidential health data. Like, is I it think t- she thinks it means like she keeps asking her. I mean, who refers to their weight as confidential health data? Like, I get it. Yeah. But, like, when I say confidential health data, I mean, like, hey, man, do you have an STD? Right, exactly. <laughs> Did you test positive for HIV? That is confidential. Yeah, not I weigh, you know, 245 or 325. <laughs> yeah, if, like, you have a, if you have a cast on your arm, 
<laughs> it is not confidential <laughs> medical information right. that your yeah. arm is broken. I see a boil on your lip. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right, exactly. My eyes are green. That is confidential <laughs> medical information. No, uh, you weigh 350 pounds. That is confidential now, medical I, information. I'm thinking she's sensitive. She must yeah. weigh more than she feels comfortable which is, talking about. Which is about. understandable. When sure. people ask me my weight, like I, I, I give a ballpark. But that's, you ever, yeah, do you ever like, why would you ask that? Right. Like I, 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 mean, I, I have pl- Believe it or not, okay, I'm a big guy. A oh, lot yeah. of people will come up to me and be like, man, how much do you weigh? And I'm like, wow, I'm glad I'm your Guinness World Book of Records. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. let's talk about this. It's an inexorbitant amount. Yes, I'm a sideshow walking around. Enjoy your life. You get to go, how much is the real number? Like, nah, dude, leave me alone. You're ridiculous. But, oh. yeah, girl pair look at him and be like, no, Ma, I'm not telling you this. You're being weird. Get out of my face. Yeah. Okay. And then tell your husband. To- <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not happy with the husband in this That's one. weird. Now, would, would you be willing to draw? What, what's the hard line on the, on the Ma here? Like, do you just you tolerate it but just give her snippy responses? Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, here's the deal. This is not so consequential, or it, sh- it should not be so consequential that, like, you stop seeing your mom. Yeah. Like, that seems ridiculous yeah, to It's me. an annoying. I'm sure that they, nobody loves their, their in-laws till the end of the earth for every single little thing. There's always little things. It's always going to happen. It's like, ah, oh, my father-in-law does this one thing, whatever. You don't stop talking to the guy because of that. Yeah. Like, you yeah. go to Easter, she snips at you a little bit, goes, how much do you weigh now? Blah, 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 blah. And then you just go, oh, these deviled eggs are delicious. I bet they're putting a little bit more pounds on and walk away. Yeah. 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 Two yeah. more now. Great yeah, dinner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm guessing about three ounces more than I did two minutes ago, mm-hmm. and then eat your deviled egg. Be funny about it. Yeah, and then light up a joint. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then she say, why are you smoking marijuana in here? And say, don't ask me for my private medical information. <laughs> <laughs> has to do with my weight. I got that's my right. glaucoma. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's right. Man, Condition. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a terrible situation. Uh, all right, here we go. Secular says, <laughs> neither of us knows the intent behind your mother-in-law's persistence. He may think you are too thin. Or overweight and be trying to open an unwelcome conversation on the subject. <laughs> you ask me for ideas, and I do have several. One, turn the tables and ask her. <laughs> Although, this, why do you keep asking me that? It's making me uncomfortable. Oh, I thought she was going to ask, what do you weigh? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what, what I, I thought. thought too. That's yeah. not turning the tables. No, that's changing uh, the subject. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how much do you weigh? Oh, yeah, Phyllis, how much do you weigh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Weird. two, say, my weight is my business, not yours. <laughs> Are you putting that weird Aunt Jemima inflection on that? Or no, is... they, they've written it in such a way that it's clear that that's My what way. they're intending. <laughs> okay, got it. Well, how else would you say it? I don't know. I just it just seemed weird that that was the specific voice you chose. Wait, my business. Yours. <laughs> Maybe we need to keep going. Uh, yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Tell the next time she mentions your weight will be the last time she sees you. Oh, oh, wow! That is harsh. Home run Whoa. there. Drop right. the anvil. It, it took it took a turn. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like I can't imagine how many times someone would have to. If they're okay, if you're sitting there at dinner and they're like, "How much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? How much do you weigh?" Yeah. And it's like, okay, th- this is the last time we're coming over here because this is obviously something ridiculous. Yeah. But if they just ask you a couple times every time you meet up, wait till Easter. It's gonna be a couple months away. She's gonna ask you a couple more questions, and then great, I'll yeah. see you at Fourth of July. A months, whatever. You'll be fine. That yeah. might be a good time to bring up the mothers eating their children. Topic. Yeah. Have, have you thought about filial cannibalism? Yeah. Well, <laughs> how beneficial would eating you be to my <laughs> other children? Like I'm how much for a, see your I'm, in a, I'm, in a, I'm in a very large caloric deficit. Like, yeah, how much do you weigh then? <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. You could feed me for three weeks. <laughs> All, right. All right. All uh, right. Last one. Dear oh, uh, Life in the Path. My husband loves to dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, and so do I. I already love this. <laughs> in fact, we met dancing many years ago. I assume that means they were out dancing, not like both dancing at the time that they met. I, uh, no, oh. I'd rather they were dancing separately like at, like, singles, at, at Studio 68, like, yeah. and then they, they caught eyes in the middle of their dance. I think it was a country music. Dance, she right. was line dancing. He was doing the mashed potato. And, and they then they just together. caught eyes, and they were okay. like, we hey, should make you. this happen. Uh, all right, here we go. He takes Zumba classes despite his knee problems. I loved Zumba, but stopped because it hurt my knees. Many times women have come up to him, oblivious of my presence, to tell him how good he is. You Zumba all right, Bob. <laughs> uh, this is, they didn't say that. I, just, I threw that in for effect. This has happened on cruises and just now in a restaurant. He's getting Zumba compliments in a restaurant? That's awesome. <laughs> 
I love good Zumba guy. <laughs> he, he must be they, really good. They recognized good. him after the They're fact. They're watching this video back at the Zumba. restaurant. <laughs> hey, Bob, I noticed you the other day in Zumba class. I'm glad we ran into each other. There's Applebee's. I'd like to tell you about it. <laughs> oh, man. That was phenomenal. Uh, I love that he's a good dancer, but I don't like random women telling him so. It feels like they're flirting. Yes, I am jealous because he is my husband. Are my feelings normal? Normal, yeah. yeah. Like he's, other women are talking to your husband. Yes, yep, okay. that, is, that is normal thought process. <laughs> Not I, dealing with this as an adult <laughs> is abnormal. Uh, I mean, here's the deal. Either you're going to have to tell him to dial it back or you're going to have to live with the fact that he Zumba's with the best. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with whether or not you Zumba anymore. Like, you're not going to get his ta- like your name tattooed on his cheek so they know, oh, he's taken. Like, you need a t-shirt that says, I'm with Zumba, and people <laughs> will know. Yeah. Yeah, Zumba Bobby. Man, Bob. I belong to Zumba Bobby. Although, I mean, okay, then those let, ladies might okay, think so he's part of a fan club and try to order the shirt, too. Oh, jeez. <laughs> let, let's, let's put a little bit of responsibility on Bob here. Do you think Bob is in any way trying to, to, to help his wife here? I think he's enjoying the attention. I oh, think he I'm is sure. too. Yeah. How old is he? How how old? How do you? How I'm ge- I'm guessing based off of knee problems 50s? in their fifties at least. Because yeah. they dance a lot, so the yep. knees go. Right. Out we sooner. met a long time ago dancing. He's a great dancer. So am I. I can't dance Zumba. anymore because of my knees. I'm guessing fifties. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go late fifties. Okay. I, I think I think there's some responsibility on Bob here to be loving to his wife and go. Oh, thanks very much. Have you met my wife? Yet? I mean, there's no indication that he's not doing that. I am just saying yeah. I am trying to read between this and say I I think that would be the right way for Bob to do this. And if he's not, I would say that's what he needs to do. You know, there's nothing wrong. He is not doing anything inherently wrong by getting the attention. That is not the problem. That is not his fault. But if he's not doing anything to try and uh, try and accommodate his wife's feelings yeah. in that situation, then he's he is obviously involved. threatened. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, even he as simple as, that. oh, hey, I really appreciate that. Have you met my wife, Laverne? I'm sure she would not be commenting on to us You right think now. I'm a good Zoomer? Look at her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We met dancing 30 years ago. Ha, ha, ha. Happy marriage. Yeah. Like, I'm sure even that small move would make your wife feel so much better, and she wouldn't feel the need to, to write us about this issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, like, if her, her description, if I take it at face value and she says, I don't like random women telling him so, uh, you're, you're going to have to let that go. I, like, Agreed. I, th- 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 you, nothing can stop random people. Like, the very nature of random means you have no control over it. Yeah, I'm if, there's, stuck if there's on that though, Ran- I mean, random. Where is he Zumba in? I don't know. That I'm guessing the community the center. Restaurant. And these are old. Uh, these are other fifty-year-old women. The YMCA. I don't Zumba see class. a bunch of other twenty-year-olds walking up to the fifty-year-old guy. Maybe that's it though. Could be like, maybe oh, it's, that's so uh, cool. it's adorable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's endearing. This old guy is zooming with us, and we're thirty years, you know, his junior. I mean, there's no reason hey. to be jealous of that. Right. Agreed. And that's why I would say she's off a little. Maybe she needs to realize that Bob isn't showing any signs of cheating. Bob isn't doing anything inherently wrong by do- enjoying things that he wants to do. I mean, and unless he's soaking it. I mean, we feel like yeah. he's... That's like, what I'm saying. If there's any responsibility on Bob, yeah, Bob needs to make sure that he's doing the right thing by his wife. But at the same point in time, okay. he is not inherently doing anything wrong by getting the attention yeah. and by enjoying things that he enjoys. Let's be honest. His knees are going out. It's a, part, it's a part-time situation. I was going to yeah. say, also, is there a possibility that there's a bit of jealousy from her because she can't do it anymore? Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, that's got to make her feel bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, I would almost guarantee that because otherwise she doesn't have any reason to say he takes Zumba classes despite his knee problems. Yeah. I loved Zumba, but stop because it hurts my knees. It almost sounds like she wanted him to stop. Yeah. Right. Because and she she's stopped. she's hurt because he keeps yeah. going. Yeah. And she can't. Because it used to be people came up and talked to them about doing the tango. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm sure and they did it just t- together, and now he's just getting in. Yeah. I'm certain that they – I think she's jealous for multiple reasons. Yeah. yeah. So – real. It's, you know, it's not crazy. It's just – He's or in a little bit. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I mean yeah. uh, if, I, if you could give advice to old Bobby here, I'd say, hey, um, uh, do, the, do the ballroom dancing. Something's a little bit less yeah, on, your, right. on the heart on the knees. Love oh, on your yeah. wife and do something Take simple. her out. Yeah. Rent a tux. Yeah. Do the oh, I bet she would go. Sure yeah. Some flowers. That. Bob, we haven't danced like this in years. Yeah. Yeah. Come and on, then, Bob. And maybe go to a restaurant where you're not going to meet anybody. Right, exactly. Go rent, to the senior living club. Rent the place out or something. Okay. If you got the money for Zoom. So her, her core question was, are my feelings normal? Huh. Yeah. It, to an extent, yes. Yeah. To an extent, yes. You're human. Uh, feelings are normal. You're seeing your husband getting attention that you're not getting, and it's obviously directly in front of you. Yes, those are normal. I think half the discipline as humans is we have all kinds of feelings that are normal that yeah. we have to keep in check. Yeah. Right. 
We yeah, have to yeah, continually yeah. discipline yeah, ourselves. Yeah, they are normalized. You are not. You are not crazy. You are not wrong. You do have some work on your part, admittedly, uh, but it's not because you're irrational. I think yep. I've had that a conversation with my children a thousand times. Mm-hmm. Hey, what you're feeling is n- normal, but. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's normal to feel that way, but that yeah. doesn't mean that you don't have work to do. Yeah, right. Uh, right, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's informed, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. your, your feelings are often not yeah, informed. You, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Emotions are in, in and of themselves irrational most of the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, is it, yeah, are my feelings normal? Yes, they are. Are they, are they rightly informed in the context of your relationship with Bobby and uh, whether how he's reacting and his follow-up to those types of things? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Okay. And in the honesty of the situation, to go a little deeper, make certain that you're not harboring this anger towards the guy and that it actually turns into you accusing him uh, of doing things he's obviously not. Yeah, yeah. That I, is one thing I would warn, warn for. Yeah, yeah. and if I, you're if you're if you're falling down this hole and, and this rabbit hole of you know I can't do this anymore. There's obviously some jealousy of the fact that you're not anymore than he is. Uh, you could be developing the thought process of jealousy towards these other women because of that. Don't let that become a slippery slope of well I'm gonna accuse Bob of cheating because he keeps getting attention from girls at the restaurant, and then you'll start pushing Bob away. Yeah, 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 and I think that's that, that's a good point. Is that like if you're feeling, they were right about this uh, knee problems in the Zumba thing. Uh, like you got to tell him. Yeah, you got to tell him. Yeah, hey, he, I'm sure he asked. Hey, man, do you, like, uh, do you, you mind keep, if I keep, keep doing this? Yeah, and and you go like, oh, you didn't want to seem like a person who would say no. Now here's the thing: if you're a person who really wants to say no, do and it. Bobby loves you, then you got to tell say him. No. Yeah, exactly. You got to tell him. Uh, and if you and if you want to, it might even just help to have the conversation. Like that, that happens. So uh, actually, I so I go out of town at least once a month, uh, and I'm gone for a couple of days for work. Mm-hmm. And it, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, but like, it, it sounds fun to my wife, mm-hmm. right? Because I, like, I get a night in a hotel. I got. I'm not doing. I have no responsibilities. Yeah, it's at night. travel. Yeah, I'm out and about. I get to eat wherever I want to at nicer places Zumba. and stuff. Yeah, I Zumba. Yeah, Zumba where you want to. And so, and so, so here's the thing is that, like, I, the, the, my wife was, and I were talking about this uh, about a month ago, and she's like, uh, she's, there's probably part of me that's jealous. That, like, you get to, yeah. to, to do these things. And, like, I, I, I totally get it. Like, it's totally, it, it mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's fun for the reason she thinks it's fun. It sucks more than she understands, but, like, right. uh, whatever. It's, it, 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 she's right. And, and the truth is, is that, like, um, we're in a better place even for her just having said that. Even right. if I can't do anything about it. Um, and there's not much I can change, and I don't even know that he has to give up the Zumba classes. But am, mm-hmm. but if that's how she's feeling, like you got to just it's tell acknowledgement him. of the feelings. Yeah, tell exactly. Him, yeah. It, it's uh, empathy for having the conversation. Zumba is a dance exercise, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I was thinking. I mean, the, dancing in itself is a flirtation. I mean, they're, they're, it, yeah, so, you know, so that's why she's going there. Yeah, that's right. true. You, you I know, don't I mean I don't dance. At least the way I dance, uh, it's not fair. Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. I agree, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Dan go out on the town. We go. It's yeah. crazy. That's why we don't go out. Yeah. I, I dance like a manatee that's trying to get sea lettuce off the floor. That's a flirtation. <laughs> to other manatees? <laughs> yeah. It's attracting yes. somebody. See that sea cow over there? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, D- you see, Secular says, as long as your husband acts appropriately in accepting the compliments, you may be, o- uh, um, you may be overreacting. Instead of feeling jealousy, why are you not feeling a twinge of pride in his accomplishment? Your feelings are normal. For someone who was insecure, bam! Oh Whoa, man, slap. come on, yeah. secular! <laughs> Drop a hammer like that. It's unnecessary. <laughs> You're but, obviously insecure, so I'm going to make you feel better by calling it out. Yeah, your feelings are normal for a pathetic bitty. Yeah, but I should yeah. go do the thigh master. <laughs> oh, All you got. Uh, if you that accept that you can't stop people from complimenting your husband, and that giving him a verbal gold star isn't necessarily flirting, you will both be better off. She is not having it. Secular is not having it. Not today. Uh, that was Dear Life from the Path. Hey, do you agree, disagree with the bias? Give us a call or shoot us a text on the complaint line, 515-517-0085. Here's the deal. No one complains on the complaint line. I assume the show is going well and nothing changes. That sounds great. And so if you're the person who broke their knee on the sidelines and is, really thinks the show is terrible, you got to tell us. Right. Man. We have to know yeah. so we can improve. We cannot do anything about this. 515-517-0085. Uh, anyway, thanks for hanging out with us, uh, and uh, we will see you uh, hopefully next week. In the meantime, be faithful in the means. God will handle the ends. Thanks for listening to Live from the Path.